Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Now, for today's video, we're going to focus on one of the most important things in regards to modular arithmetic and hopefully just sort of close out this basic introduction, right? We had our what is modular arithmetic, then we had our, you know, different notations, the one with parentheses, without parentheses, and then we had our introduction to negative modular arithmetic. Now we have this one. This is one of the most important properties of modular arithmetic and allows us to actually work with with it. Now, here's the thing with modular arithmetic. Once again, we're working with the remainder. We're not working with the actual number itself. And the lovely thing about this is that even throughout history, it's been used in one way or another. One of the most captivating one for me is when I figured out that in order to array different armies, because guess what? When you reorganize armies, you're always going to have remainders. Maybe those remainders are going to start off as a new squad or a new group, right? And so modular arithmetic played actually a pretty pivotal role in helping strategists reorganize armies. So that's one thing, you know, whenever you want to. I'm not basically promoting that, but that's one cool way to use it. So here we go. This property right here, there's two of them, right? So if A is equivalent to B mod M and C is equivalent to D mod M, then we have two things. The first one is that if you add them together, A plus C is equivalent to B plus D mod M. Right, and the second one is A times C is equivalent to B times D mod M. Now, why is this useful? Well, guess what? As the numbers get larger and larger, it might be a little more difficult to start working with it. When I was introducing it, of course, I use numbers that are fairly easy to work with, but most of the times when you're dealing with modular arithmetic, you're dealing with fairly large and ugly numbers, right? So these properties allow you to actually finagle with it, work with it, and see what we got. So for example, just to show you guys what this means, well, let's just say if we had seven is equivalent to two mod five. And I don't know, 11 is equivalent to one mod five, right? That's fairly simple. Now, what happens if we are working with a larger number? Well, at least if we know these two, right? And we work with, let's say, 77, right? 77 is just seven times 11. So we know in the end, the remainder, right? The mod is just two times one is still gonna be equivalent to two mod five. Well, the other one is if you add them together, which is at least in this case, the number is still fairly simple. If we had 18, right? That is equivalent to basically these two add together. Three mod five. Plain and simple, right? That's the usage of one and two, the properties of one and two. Just something like that, even though it's a fairly easy to work with number, you can see how if you just know these two, you already can work with fairly bigger numbers. So of course, this is a simple example. Let's look at some good stuff. All right, so let's start off with this right here. I'm giving you two of them, right? 13 is equivalent to one mod three and 155 is equivalent to two mod three. Now, of course, if we're looking at basically, let's just say for example, 168 is equivalent to something mod three. Well, in this case, hopefully it's fairly obvious. If you add them together, right? 13 plus 155, that's 168. That means you add the remainder together. Now here's the tricky part. I wanted this specific example because that's gonna be a little weird, right? Because if you add them together, one plus two, that's three. Three mod three makes no sense at all because once again, remember mod, you're actually divided by three. Three divided by three actually is, you know, one. There's no remainder in this case. So even though this number, when you add them together, one plus two is three, right? It's not really three, it's actually equivalent to zero mod three. Hopefully that makes a little more sense. Now, of course, I'm gonna give you guys a very, fairly big number. I wouldn't say it's very big, right? Two, one, five. And hopefully that is correct. Uh, two, one, five is equivalent to something mod three. Now, this is more of a test taking strategy because guess what? If you encounter a problem and they give you something like this, most likely this is the end result of some interaction between these two statements. So if this is addition and I've just shown addition and multiplication, then most likely 
this one must be multiplication. So if it's multiplying, then you're gonna have two times one in this case, right? Because based on this second property, two times one is two, so over here, this final number is two. So basically that's equivalent to two mod three. Plain and simple, but be very careful of something like the first part of this example. All right, so the idea of it giving you two statement and you're using the property is actually fairly simple when we're working with uh, basically modular arithmetic. Most of the usefulness is actually when you're working with big numbers and you're not entirely sure what to do. So for example, let's just look at the first one really quickly. We have 382 is equivalent to something mod 36. Well, 382, we can actually break it down fairly easily. For example, I'm gonna break it down into 360 plus 22. Why is that? Well, that means that I can find out basically the two numbers, right, as uh, independent when you mod 36 and then add them together. So if you had 360 is equivalent to something mod 36. Well, hopefully at this point, it's fairly simple. 360 is definitely divisible by 36 totally with no remainder. So this is actually right here is zero. So that's good. And the other one, now we have 22 is equivalent to something mod 36. Well, if that's the case, guess what? Not 36 cannot go into 22. So in this case, this must be 22. So just like that, our question mark right here is just 22. 22 mod 36, right? Now, that's not even all that bad. Let's look at this, for example. This is a fairly big number, and of course you can break it down. And here's my little hint. What if I use this? What if I say this is e the equivalent of 382 times three? All of a sudden, it's a lot more simple. Because guess what? At least this one right here, we know that's gonna be 22 mod 36. Okay, and then this one right here, three, is just gonna be three mod 36, because guess what, 36 can't go into three. No matter how you wanna squeeze it, doesn't work, right? Now, if that's the case, we can multiply them together. So what do we have? We have actually, both of them together is 66, because you're multiplying, right, by the second part of those properties, mod 36. That's not good because that's not simplified to, I guess you could say, the lowest parts, right? Because 66, well, guess what? You can actually put 36 in there. So when you actually subtract a 36 in there, this is actually equivalent to 30 mod 36, right? Just by subtracting 36, because 36 can fit in there one time. So this is the actual true remainder. So be very careful of this right here, right? You don't want this because clearly, right? Hopefully at this point, your number sense is, you know, tingling. 66, you can actually fit 36 in there, but after you fit it in there once, whatever's left over is 30. So your actual remainder in this case is 30 mod 36 for this guy right here. All right, so here we have one more example. Now, I'm also gonna introduce once again, another test taking sort of hint, right? So understand that those creating the problems are always gonna try to basically link them together. It's gonna be related somehow, especially if they are presented together, right? So if you're taking a test or if your teacher introduced it as a homework problem or a set of homework problems, guess what? They're probably somehow related. So let's look at this really quickly. We have 144 and that is equivalent to something mod seven. Now, hopefully at this point, your division is on point. If you divide this by seven, what you have remainder is actually four. Okay, that is fairly simple. Now, if we're trying to work with this, we can. And that's definitely not ruling this out because guess what? I would personally do this as well. You can definitely just divide by seven and figure out the remainder. The other thing you can do is, well, if this and this is introduced together and usually if they're introduced as parts, then this is probably somehow used to figure this out. Well, that means this must be multiplying by some whole number to get this guy. Well, if this ends in six, then it's most likely gonna be four, right? Because guess what, four times four is 16. That at least gives you the idea that it ends in six. Well, let's just double check really quickly. One, four, four times four. What is that? Six, one, seven, one, five. There you go, 
right? Simple as that. So this right here is 144 times four, okay? We know that 144 is equivalent to four mod seven. So here is just four mod seven. And don't forget the parentheses. And here is also, <laughs> guess what? If you're modding seven, you can't really fit seven into four. So it's gonna be four mod seven. Boom. All right, so if these two are multiplying together to get this guy, that means I can multiply these guys to get this right here. Well, guess what? When you multiply four and four, that's fairly simple. That is 16. So you have 16 mod seven. And hopefully at this point, you know, red alarm bells are ringing. You can't really do that because, well, I mean, you can, but you want to simplify it, right? Because you're, you're dividing by seven and seven can definitely fit into 16. So it can go in there how many times? Well, guess what? One time, right? So technically now you have nine mod seven. Uh, okay, maybe not, not, not once, twice, right? And then there you go again. So you subtract seven again, you have two mod seven. And just like that, it's fairly simple, right? I wanted to show you guys, oh, maybe I see it one time. And then when you subtract it, oh wait, it can go again, right? It's not that the end all be all, you have to know exactly how many times it goes in and have the remainder just like that. Just keep going step by step and there you go. That's the final thing, unless for some reason, seven can go into two, nope. There it is, simple as that. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully this ties up this series of very basic introduction of modular arithmetic. We had our basic introduction. We have our different notation with and without parentheses. We have our negative numbers. And of course, now we have our two properties. So there it is. There is definitely a lot more you can do with it, right? There is a bunch of different theorems, corollaries, results that are just Fascinating, but a little more complex than I really want to show it for a basic introduction. But hopefully, at least with this series, you guys can see when you encounter modular arithmetic, it's not nearly as bad as, well, when you first have a gut reaction looking at it, right? It is actually fairly simple, at least the basics of it. So there you have it. Hopefully you find this a little helpful, if not at least a little less daunting. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.